globe, heading out around the globe. Sights to see, things to know, the incredible race. Texas to Timbuktu, follow us back to a building crew. The great big story of me and you, the incredible race. We've got a whole world to see, the incredible race. So won't you come with me, the incredible race. God's plans for you and me. Uncover the history, the incredible race. VBS. This year, our theme is the incredible race. One family, one race, one savior. Now, this year we have worked extra hard to make sure that this VBS is one like no other. By now, everyone should have received their activity kits. Now, these kits are very important tools to make sure that you can stay involved and engaged from home. If you open up your kits, you should find an activity book. This activity book will have everything you need to follow along from home. You'll also find a passport. You will need this passport as we travel around the world, discovering what God wants us to know. You will also find some treats for the week and all of your craft supplies needed to complete your crafts. But my favorite little treat inside this bag has got to be this. Do you guys know what this is? Kind of looks like a watch, you know? What is it? Fitbit? What is it? It's a pedometer. Now, guys. Step one, I want you guys to ask your mom, dad, or guardian to help you poke some holes in here and make sure that when you put it on, it fits snug. Then I want you to set it to zero. Once it's at zero, I want you to run. I want you to jump, dance, skip, hop, just move. The aim is to keep fit, but have fun. I want to make sure you guys are staying active this week. I mean, we are runners and we're getting ready for a big race. So we need to warm up 
and make sure that we are exercising. So, at the end of each day, I want you guys to ask your guardians to send a picture to me with you and your pedometer. I want to see who's keeping active. And I also want to see who needs a little bit of encouragement. We're all in this together. We're all part of the same team. So I want everyone to do an amazing job. At the end of the week, I will choose a couple winners who I think have done an amazing job this week and they will get a special prize. Now, we have so many amazing things in store for you this week. We're gonna stop by the refueling station and check out what Pastor D has to say. We're gonna go to the Globe Trotting Gym and work out with Miss Chloe. We're gonna stop for some snacks at the Runway Cafe. And when we're finished here online, you are going to do some world-class crafts. It's gonna be an awesome week, runners. But first, let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, thank you so much for these boys and girls. As we get ready to race around the world, please reveal to us everything you want us to know. Thank you so much for everything you continue to do for us. In your name we pray, amen. Well, I hope you guys are excited. We are getting ready for this race. So, what are you still doing here? Ready, set, go! and girls, welcome to the great race. I'm Thurston and I'm an anthropologist. That means that I study people and the different ways that they do things in different countries all over the world. I am so glad that you joined me for five exciting days of adventure because as you can see, we're way up in the sky in a hot air balloon traveling the world. Oh, and of course, I want you to meet my best friend. Together, we are hope explorers on a great hope adventure. This is Nathan. Nathan. I'm here. 
Yeah, <laughs> I'm here. I just, uh, whoo, oh boy. I must have just uh, fallen asleep down there. Yeah, yeah, that's it. I'm just relaxing. I'm so relaxed. Nathan, you're not afraid of heights, are you? Me? Oh, no, 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 no. I, I love heights. The higher, the better, I always say. Mm-hmm. Okay, fine. I don't love heights, you know? I'm just thinking that maybe if I can't see where we are, I'll forget that we are thousands of feet up in the air. <laughs> oh, take it easy, Nathan. Look, this hot air balloon is taking us on an amazing adventure. Now, what do you see down there? Oh, well, well, I see the tops of trees and Oh, I see a village. Oh, and people, too. Oh, uh, and there's the rainforest. We were just there. <laughs> Absolutely. You know, it really is something to see the world from way up here. There's a very important reason that we decided to travel the world in this hot air balloon. Have you ever heard of the Great Commission? Yes, I have, Thurston. Before Jesus went back to heaven, he gave his followers very important instructions. Go and make disciples of all nations. He's absolutely right. Now, we decided to go out and spread the gospel of Jesus ourselves all over the world. On this adventure, not only do we get to meet people from different places, but we get to share the best news of all, the good news of the gospel of Christ, and you can help us. Mm -hmm. Now, we've only been in this hot air balloon for a few days, but what an adventure it's been so far. Let us tell you all about our first stop. We traveled to South America, to the country of Ecuador. It's right on the equator. Oh boy, did I love Ecuador. Not only did I love the people, but I loved the food. Look at all these platanos. Now, in Ecuador, Platanos is the word for bananas. Yes, Ecuador grows and exports lots and lots of platanos. Nearly 25% of all bananas in the whole world. And while we were there, we met this little boy. His name is Julio, and he's nine years old. Julio lives in a city called Guayaquil, which is the largest city in Ecuador. Julio loves to play football with his brothers and sisters. There are four children in his family, plus his parents and grandmother, but there's just one bed for all of them to share. That's right. And there were no platanos in Julio's kitchen. In fact, his family had very little food at all. One time, the only thing they had to eat was a potato. They had to share that one potato among the whole family. There's very little for them to eat, and most nights, Julio still feels hungry when it's time to go to sleep. But that all changed when people from a nearby church started visiting. They took food from Children's Hunger Fund to Julio's family. Each box of nutritious food could feed their whole family for almost one week. Best of all, the volunteers from the church told Julio's family about the love of Jesus Christ. They explained that Jesus died for all of us, and we can have hope in Him. And today, we have some really great news. You can help families just like Julio's. This is a Children's Hunger Fund coin pack. Now, you can take your coin pack home and fill it up with coins. Your family and your friends can help out, too. Every 25 cents you put into the coin pack will buy one meal for someone like Julio. Only 25 cents? That's bananas. <laughs> That's right, Nathan. Now, a dollar will buy a meal for a family of four. So there are a lot of ways to earn coins. Just think how many more children will have nutritious food to eat because of your help. What a great way to share the love of Jesus Christ with families all over the world. And these families are a part of our family, the family of Adam and Eve. We're all related. That's right, Nathan. Thanks, kids. Hey, Nathan, it looks like you got over your fear of heights. <laughs> heights? Heights? Whoa! Don't worry, kids. Nathan will be fine, and we'll see you tomorrow after our next exciting stop. Good morning, boys and girls. 
Today's mile marker memory verse will be taken from Romans 3 verse 23. For all have sinned and fall short from the glory of God. Now your turn. For all have sinned and fall short of the glory of God. Great job. See you tomorrow, boys and girls. Hey, Incredible Racers, it's your coach, Pastor D here, with some more fuel for your faith. Let me tell you about a little boy named William. William loved his grandfather. Growing up, when it seemed like no one was around, William's grandpa was there for him. William could count on Papa Joe when he was alone. William could cry on Papa Joe when he was ashamed. William could cling to Papa Joe when he was afraid. William loved his Papa Joe. They went on trips together. They watched movies together. They went to church together. They played games together. They went swimming together. They read stories together. William loved Papa Joe. And that's why William cried for three hours straight one Sunday when his mom came up to his room and told him that his family would be moving to a place far, far away from Papa Joe. William couldn't believe the news. He was crushed. Papa Joe was very sad too, but he was even more sad to learn that his Grandson was so unhappy. William was so sad that he wouldn't eat and he couldn't sleep. So to cheer him up, Papa Joe dropped by the house one day and gave William a gift. When William heard his grandfather at the door, he ran to meet him and gave his, his grandfather the biggest, tightest hug. And while they held each other, Papa Joe slipped a little present into William's pocket. When William reached for the present and pulled it out, he found a little watch in his hand. It was Papa Joe's favorite blue watch. William cherished the watch for years. He guarded it with his life. And that day he promised to never take it off. 
Now, most of William's friends and family didn't really like the watch. To them, the watch was different. The color was different. The shape was different. And the size, well, different. And not only that, but the watch would stop working properly sometimes. On the outside, the watch had scratches and cracks. And on the inside, the watch had busted parts. But William loved this broken blue watch because even though it was broken, William thought it was the coolest watch in the world. It was beautiful because it was bought by Papa Joe and it belonged to Papa Joe. All of William's friends told him to replace the watch with a new one. But because the watch was so special to William, he decided to repair it instead of replacing it. You know what? You remind me a lot of William's little blue watch. You are broken. Sometimes you make mistakes. Broken. Sometimes you forget your manners. Broken. Sometimes you harm others with your words. Broken. Sometimes you hurt yourself with your habits. Broken. Sometimes you want nothing to do with Jesus. Broken. You are broken. And you're not the only watch who is broken. The Bible tells us in the beginning, God created men and women with the dust of the ground and the breath of life. And when Adam and Eve came to life, they were pure and perfect. But when they disobeyed God and tasted a fruit from the tree that God told them to stay away from, evil walked into our world. Adam and Eve messed up bad. And when they messed up, we all got messed up. There are no perfect people in our world. Just like William's broken blue watch, our hearts are broken. Our minds are broken. Our souls are broken. But even though we are broken, we are still beautiful. We are beautiful, not because we were bought by Papa Joe and we belong to Papa Joe, but we are beautiful because we were bought by Papa Jesus and we belong to Papa Jesus. You might not be perfect, but the love that Jesus has for you is perfect. Romans chapter five, verse eight says, but God showed his great love for us by sending Jesus to die for us while we were still sinners. I am so glad today that your sin and my sin does not stop God from loving us. Our mistakes and our mess ups don't make us less special, but we are so special to God that he would rather repair us than replace us. Because of sin, we are sinners, but because of Jesus, we are special.
Hey BBS, I'm Miss Chloe and this is your five minute movement break. Are you guys ready to move? Okay, let's start off by marching on the spot. And do you guys know why it is important to move? It's gonna help us get stronger. All right, so marching on the spot, kind of like we're in the army, nice. And what we wanna do is get our heart rates up and our blood pumping. Okay, so we're gonna go into a move that you guys do every single day when you get out of a chair. It's called squatting. So we're gonna squat down and stand up. Squat down and stand up. I'm gonna show you from the side. So down and up. Awesome. Do you guys know what muscles we are working right now? So we are working our glutes. That is our butt. And we are also working our quads. These are the muscles in the front of our legs. Nice job. Don't forget to breathe. Okay, you have three more squats here, team. Three and two and one. Okay, shake it all out. Let's go into some jumping jacks. So hands go all the way up and feet go all the way out. Awesome. Let's count to 10 out loud. Let's go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. Okay, so your heart rate should be up a little bit. You should be breathing a little bit heavier. We're gonna hit the floor and strengthen our upper body with some push-ups. Let's get down to the ground, okay? So, our hands are nice and wide, and we are coming down and pushing up. We have 10, are you ready? Let's count them. One, two, three, four, five, halfway there, five, four, three, two, last one, and one. Jump up, shake it out. How are you guys feeling? Okay, we're gonna go into another move to strengthen our legs. It is called a lunge. So, we are going to stand up nice and tall. Our feet are hip width apart. You're gonna take one big step back with your right leg. And now, glide down and come back up. Down and up. Here we go, you have 10 on this side. Are you ready? Let's go, count it out. 10, nine, eight, seven, you got this. Six, five, four, three, two, and one. Switch legs, switching sides. We gotta make both sides even. We don't wanna walk around all lopsided all day. Here we go. Counting to 10. And 10, nine, eight, seven, six, five. You got this. Four. It's okay if you fall a little bit. Three, two, and one. Whoa, I almost fell. If you have to hold on to a friend's hand while you do that one, that's okay. All right, so we're gonna hit the ground one more time and work on our core. So the core is the muscles that are holding all of our important organs. We're gonna come on down and do some sit-ups. Are you ready? Here we go. So here's how it looks. You're coming all the way up, keeping your feet on the ground. This is your last exercise. Let's go team, 10 of them. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, nice stop, three more, eight, nine, and 10. Come on up, 
as fast as you can. Let's go. Awesome job. That was your five minute movement break team. Way to go. I'll see you next time. Bye. Dear Journal, I can't believe it. I am actually on my way to the Amazon rainforest. Four years ago, when I started missionary training, all I could see was a mountain of courses and hundreds of hours of studying. But now, in just a couple of hours, we're going to be landing in Brazil. I am so excited. Thank you, Lord, for the privilege of taking the gospel to a people who have never even heard of you. Sierra, this is AIG Flight 316 with total engine failure. Repeat, we have total engine failure. Attempting a forced landing. Our last known position was 50 miles northeast of Tikal, heading 124. worked a miracle because that should have been so much worse. Wow, thank you for protecting us. Wait, what does this mean for my trip? How, how am I going to get to Manaus now? Okay, Lord, help me trust you in this. What is that? A ziggurat? This is incredible. <laughs> well, buddy, all I can say is I sure like taking off a whole lot more than landing. Yeah, and why'd they make us put our head between our knees? No one ever said we had to do that. I know, that was ridiculous. Remind me to never fly this airline again. Wow. So this is Rio de Janeiro. Sure isn't what I expected. Yeah. What I thought we'd see some people. And an airport. I mean, when have you ever heard of a plane landing where there wasn't any airport? Hmm. I never thought about that. But I think you're right. Of course I'm right. Besides, that's where we're supposed to pick up our car rental. Says so right here in the clue. Hmm. Then it must be around here somewhere. I know. We just need to find it before any of the other teams show up, though. Why don't you go check that way? I'll look over here. All right. Whoa. Ooh. Ooh. <sighs> hey, Moose, I think I found it. Really? That was fast. Whoa. What is that? Yeah, it's a ziggurat. What kind of rat? <laughs> no, it's a, a ziggurat. It's like a pyramid, kind of. So it's not an airport? An airport? Oh, come on, let's keep looking, buddy. Oh my goodness. I can't believe that happened. Oh. Are you, are you okay? Uh, yeah. A little shaken up. The, the question is, how are you? Just, just happy to be alive. No kidding. Is is everyone off the plane? Um, yeah. Well, except for uh, His Majesty. He's his... refusing to leave his seat. His Majesty. Oh, as soon as you get to know him, you'll understand why I call him that. He uh, won't leave his seat until he. Uh, talks to the president of the airline and the FAA. What? 
Yeah, and he wants to see your pilot's license, your flight school transcript, and a complete maintenance report on the aircraft. Let me guess. A spoiled rich kid. <laughs> you got it. Well, he can just sit there. <sighs> Whoa! Would you look at this? What is it? Yeah, you think somebody's been here before us? And to think, we almost hit that. No kidding. Wait, so what happened? I, I don't know. I mean, both engines failed. I, I don't know why. I, I'm just glad there was a clearing for us to land. Okay, so what do we do now? Uh, uh, well, excuse me, sir. Could you point us in the direction of the airport? We're kind of in a hurry. Airport? Uh, what do you mean? What do you mean? What do you mean? This is Rio de Janeiro, isn't it? Wait, wait a minute. I'm, I'm totally confused. I, um, I think he means Rio de Janeiro. <laughs> this looks more like Rio de Jungalo, right? Because... Uh, no. Uh, Yikes, that was bad. Okay. Uh, okay, wait, wait a minute. You think this is Rio de Janeiro? Uh, uh, can I see your tickets, please? Oh, yeah, sure. There you go. Uh, yeah, look. I keep telling corporate to update their ticket scanners. Is there a problem? <sighs> oh, there's a problem, all right. Oh, gentlemen, I'm sorry to have to tell you this, but it looks like somehow you got on the wrong plane. What? That's impossible. Yeah, that's impossible. You would think it's impossible, but it's not. Uh, so, what do we do now? Yeah, what do we do now? Well, under normal circumstances, we would just put you on another flight. But, um, considering that we just crash-landed in the jungle, there's not much we can do. Ha! That's funny. There for a second, I thought she said crash-landed. I <laughs> know, me too! She did say crash-landed. Crash-landed?! <laughs> Oh, so that's why we had to put our head between our knees. Uh, wait a minute. You thought that was a normal landing? Uh, have you boys never flown before? No. But we have been on the airplane ride at the zoo a bunch of times. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. So your first ever plane flight crashes in the jungle. That kind of stinks. Yeah. Yeah, what are the odds of that happening? Uh, okay, so you've never flown before. I I'm just curious, but... Why now? Oh, well, you see, we're involved in this really, really, really big race with a bunch of other teams. Yeah, it's a trip around the world, and it's got prizes and everything. And it's really incredible. Wait, the incredible race? You guys are in the incredible race? You've heard of it? Sure, everyone's heard of the incredible race. That is so cool, guys. How far into it are you? We just started this morning. Bummer. <sighs> Yeah, I always feel so bad for the teams that get eliminated right off the bat. Well, that's not gonna happen to us, is it, Moose? No, sorry, cause we go in the distance, cause we got our eyes on the prize. Really? Okay, good to stay positive. Uh, so, Captain, tell me, how much longer till we're back up in the old air? Back in the air? Yeah. Uh huh. Back in the air. <laughs> um, uh, well, considering the fact that uh, we don't have a runway, right. um, we've got two damaged wings, two flat tires, and two engines that don't work. I would say we'll be back. Uh, never? Never? Whoa. That sure is a long time, isn't it, Moose? Sure is, buddy. So until someone rescues us, we're... Um Pretty much stuck here. <laughs> well, we're not going to stand around like a couple of ninnies now, are we, buddy? I should say not. <laughs> what, what are you going to do? Well, I don't know, but we're going to think of something, aren't we, buddy? I should say so. Come on, let's go plan. <laughs> I would... <laughs> I would really like to listen in on that meeting. No kidding. <sighs> but I'm going to go back to the plane and see if I can get the radio to work one more time. Uh, is there anything I can do? Uh, I'll let you know. <sighs> 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 
So I saw you reading a Bible earlier on the flight. You're religious? Oh, I'm a Christian, if that answers your question. <laughs> Do you ever wonder why bad things happen? Why God allows bad things to happen? <sighs> I sure do. Yeah, you mean like crash landing in the jungle? Yeah, and, and diseases and earthquakes and tornadoes. Yeah, I used to, that's for sure. I used to? You don't anymore? No, not really. Why not? Well, because the Bible tells us why. It does? <laughs> what does it say? Well, do you remember Adam and Eve, the first man and woman? I may have heard this story, but it's been a very long time ago. Okay, first of all, it's not just a story. They were real people in a real place. But anyways, I'll give you the condensed version. <sighs> so way back in the beginning, when God created the world, everything was perfect. There was no death or disease or sadness. I mean, nothing bad ever happened. Really? Yep, but it didn't last for long. What changed everything? Well, God had put them in this beautiful garden. He gave them everything to enjoy except the fruit from one certain tree. Then he told them not to eat from the tree and told them what would happen if they did. But they ate it anyway. You got it. And the rest is history. Because of their disobedience, the whole world was put under a curse. I mean, sin entered the world and affected everything. And now, just like Adam and Eve, we all disobey God. So that's why there's death and diseases and earthquakes and tornadoes? And why bad things like this happen. <sighs> it's not a very happy story, is it? <laughs> no, it's not. But... The good news is that God has promised us he's going to remove the curse someday. So, I mean, it's, it's not always going to be like this. There's going to be a happy ending. And th speaking of the curse, you should move your foot. Is everything okay? Yeah, we're good. It's just a scorpion. Oh, just a scorpion. Oh, is that all? It's okay, he's dead. So, any success with the radio? Nope. And now I'm wondering if my Mayday call even went through. Wait, what does that mean? <sighs> well, it, it means that nobody knows where we are. Oh. So, I'm gonna have to go for help. By yourself? Why don't you take one of the guys with you? <laughs> I don't think so. I don't know. Well, wait, how do you know which way to go? Well, I remember seeing a village show up on the radar about 30 miles east of here when we were looking for a place to land. 30 miles? That could take you several days in this terrain. Which is why I need to get going. I don't know. I don't, I hate the thought of you going by yourself. It's okay. And, and Look, and I think you guys need to stay put. You know what, there's plenty of food and water. And hey, you can sleep in the plane if you need to. But, but what if you get injured or, or encounter wild animals? Just pray that I don't. And don't worry, we're gonna get through this. I just know it. Dear Journal, I gotta admit, a wave of fear swept over me as I watched the captain leave. Here we were, stranded in the jungle with very limited supplies and no way to communicate with the outside world. Please, God, protect the captain and guide him quickly to someone who can help us. Today's activity is to put on your pedometer and go for a walk with your family. Try to take as many steps as possible and send me a picture when you're through. Send your picture to Auntie Tasha at vbs at applecreeksda.com. See you tomorrow and have a great day.